Hello, Gabe. Uh, we're going to take a look at your first two postings here for the class. So I'm going to jump on screen share as we normally do. Um, go ahead and do that and uh, get right into it. We'll uh, move into emphasis first. <clears throat> so again, um, as you've seen me do these videos before, I uh, just uh, usually take a look at the uh, initial images to see how you're uh, following the parameters and so on. Um, looks like uh, you've got the, the general idea. These projects aren't meant to be um, as technically challenged as the ones we did in uh, in the fall. Uh, this obviously is a 100 level. It's more about the, the, the use of the space and the composition and so on. So um, this may be um, feeling like it's a little bit more uh, straightforward and simple, but um, I want you to follow during the term when I have those notes in terms of knowing your camera, um, that kind of thing. I want you to kind of consider your, yourself in that category since you've done the lighting class and you know a little bit about, um, uh, a little bit more about your camera, you know, a little bit more about um, the way that lighting works. So taking a look here, this project is all about uh, emphasis, um, point of view, um, making sure that uh, when you make your images, that it is coming from a perspective. It's not simply uh, something that is, is a passive uh, a point of view. Now, that doesn't mean that, that a passive point of view is uh, always a, a, like a bad thing or, 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 or anything like that. That can be used at, at other times, like if you're trying to do some sort of observational study, um, something where the, the camera is meant to, to just be this sort of hidden uh, object that's not influencing the scene at all. There are, there are reasons you would do something like that. But uh, in this case, we're deliberately trying to uh, offer ourselves as the, the uh, perspective. So that's where we're going here. Um, so in the environment, it looks like you've got that space. I would have, I would have pulled back, started back even farther though, just to give yourself even more space. Uh, think of it almost like a landscape to, to start off with. Um, the portrait, uh, you've, you've stepped in and you've done a good job here of breaking on, uh, uh, breaking the picture plane with the, with the building. I think that's a good idea to, to do. It's interesting that you chose on the next one and only the next one to go with the vertical. Um, portraits usually are presented as, as a vertical. I, it, I would have thought that, um, and I haven't, um, I haven't verified this yet, but I, I would have thought that a lot of people would have gone with the vertical on the portrait if they had sort of went in that direction that they would have think portrait would be the vertical. Um, this line, uh, this one I think is a, is a really excellent image. Whether you knew it or not, you're getting very close to using the rule of thirds here. You've got this, this wonderful sort of geometry that's happening here. You've got a space here, you've got a space here. This looks like you've taken the lighting class, so you're demonstrating your uh, your your ability here. Here again, you're demonstrating something that we haven't gotten to yet that we're working on now, and that's shape. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, rhythm. Uh, you're doing the alternating rhythm here. I like that you are thinking about the topic and then you're moving and, and you're looking to, to be able to, to emphasize that. It's a good thing. Plus, at the same time, you've got this quality of lighting that's happening here that's breaking up that space pretty, uh, pretty well. Color is a tough one with the subject that you're doing. It's also, you know, so bland, um, gray and beige and that kind of thing. Um, light. I mean, you're using light throughout the entire thing. We both know now at this stage that photography is just about light. So um, overall, I think you've done a pretty good job. Your exposures um, on these last ones down here, um, at least as I am seeing them on my computer here, uh, are a bit dark. Um, they're lacking a little bit of luminosity. So uh, you may need to uh, check that a little bit um, when you're making your images. Uh, we still aren't editing. We're uh, our, our images not in this one, uh, but so uh, feel free to move into your into your manual control now. You do know those controls pretty well, uh, and and make those adjustments so you get a little bit more luminosity on the images. Now let's uh, jump into your um, 
your rule of thirds here. I think we're somewhere here. Yeah, there we are. And, um, and see where we are with those. The rule of thirds, um, of course, is a structure that we use uh, to uh, create uh, balance and create order where there usually is not. Um, so it, it, it's ex especially uh, helpful when we have very complex scenes and where it is uh, uh, otherwise difficult to, to find some sort of structure. So landscapes and outdoors is a very good um, uh, 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 element to use when we're when we're dealing with it. So it looks like you've you've got the general idea as I'm scrolling through all of these images here. Um, let's just kind of work through them, and, and uh, I'll give you some observations here. Uh, yeah, we've got the you got the horizon line placed pretty well. What I look for in the um, in these rule of thirds is is first, are you understanding the the principle? That's that's pretty important. Um, it's a principle. Do you know what it is? Uh, all visual communicators need to know certain things. You need to know what uh, uh, the rule of thirds is. You need to know that photography is about light. You'll, you'll need to know the terminology of aperture and shutter speed and stuff like that. So um, knowing what it is and being able to use it effectively are two different things, though. Um, so here you're using the, the rule of thirds and placing uh, objects in this location right here, that's a good job. Uh, we don't have a whole lot more going on here, but for the uh, for the, for all intensive purposes, you're using where you would place the structure uh, to 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 locate the um, uh, the centralized focused object. That's a good idea. That's one of the the, the purposes of, of doing it. Where would you put? Uh, an element of where you otherwise have a lot of uh, chaos. This is a tough photograph to take, especially at this time of day, um, because it's it you don't have a whole lot going on um, as far as the the lighting. It's it's I mean you do there's variations, but uh, it, it, this this is, this is a real challenge to uh, to achieve. So is this one. Um, you've got a bit of short lighting happening here, I suppose. Um, maybe. Maybe it could have come in a little bit closer uh, to the objects, gone even more abstract with it. Um, this one, it, this one's difficult. This one's a good graphic image, I think. The graphic designer would appreciate this one for the potential of it. There's just not a whole lot more going on um, with it. Good placement on this one. Uh, you've got the, oh, 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 hang on, hang on. <laughs> not use my mouse here to, to do that. Um, we've got the, uh, the it, it's, it's, it's difficult to find that horizon, but you, you've got the horizon. It, it's, it's feeling like it's right here, which is in the middle, um, which isn't exactly where we would want it to be. So is the, the duck feels a little bit, or whatever this is, uh, feels a little bit centralized. We could have shifted up or down just a little bit more technically to get it in there. Um, this one's a better use of it. The duck is slightly lower um, and the horizon, which is mounting somewhere right up in here, feels a little higher. You're getting a better tension on that plus the juxtaposition of this energy versus this energy. It's a much more effective use of it. Um, the diagonals here, this is, a, this is also a challenge here. Um, basically, when, when you have a, um, a scene, and you have angles, especially something like a horizon that is at a diagonal like that, like it, the horizon is not straight, like a hill of some sort. What you are looking for to counterbalance it is something that in the scene that is, in fact, straight. As long as you have that, the, the audience and the viewer will, won't feel disoriented. You've got that started here, and that's a good job. I don't know if that was an observation or you did that on purpose or you were seeing that purposefully. You got this straight up and down here. But we, what we really needed was a horizontal line that would have been straight. Here was your opportunity right here, uh, this shadow, and it's not quite there yet. It's almost there. Um, but if you have a diagonal on a horizon, if you have some other element that's straight, it'll almost sort of balance it out and satisfy it a little bit better. Keep that in mind. I hope you know what I'm talking about, or at least I'm translating it well enough for you.
this was all right. Um, it's pretty straightforward. Again, it's, it's rather, it, it's good for graphic design. Rule of thirds, by the way, for graphic designers, um, they love it when, they, when you give them uh, photographs that have incorporated the, the rule of thirds because it typically allows for the designer uh, to take pick that up where you've left off and continue to use it within uh, their structure as well. Uh, again, same thing here. It's a good placement where you have the, uh, the squirrel. Your horizon, which is a bit high right now, um, uh, could have been a little bit lower. So if you would have stepped, you know, stood up just a little bit, you could have lowered the horizon and kept the squirrel just where it is. Photography can sometimes be about millimeters and inches. This is a nice observation. And this is what I'm talking about when I have, when you have these diagonals, diagonals, diagonal, all these things are not going in one direction, but you do have this one element that is going straight. Then it feels very, uh, it, it still feels balanced. Uh, I, I appreciate how you're using the shallow depth of field here and where you're placing the focus. This is what I mean about emphasis. This is what I mean about being able to pull the viewer in to, to see exactly what you want them to see, not just random. You're saying, here's what I want you to focus on. Here's what I want you to, uh, to in fact, be looking at. Um, first two uh, projects, uh, I think you're just getting warmed up. Um, we're going to be speeding forward in this eight week session. It's meant to be that way. I, I, um, I think it's a, it's a good idea to uh, have a, a, a compositional session here where we move through very quickly these principles and have you nonstop just, just practicing these basic principles. They're basic principles, but they are principles that we will work with over and over and over again in our careers. And so um, while this is a 100 level class, this is a foundations class, this is an essentials class, um, it's key to improving even your most complex work. So Gabe, I'm glad that you um, are, are, uh, are moving forward with your photography. Make sure that you're incorporating the stuff we, we did in the, the 276 in your lighting class, even though we're outside and you're not necessarily um, uh, controlling that light. Um, feel free to be thinking about things like uh, time of day, golden hour, blue hour, all of that kind of stuff, and take full advantage of your knowledge of your camera controls now. Uh, I may not be mentioning it a whole lot in class, but on the handouts, you will see that I have, for those who have a bit more camera experience, I'm talking to some of the students just like you. All right. Well, uh, we will see you in class. All right. Bye-bye now.